Everybody about ready to go? Ready. For the last session of the day? Um, I think I think we recognize most of the people that were on the planning committee earlier. Um, you met Jack and you met myself and Val was introduced, but we didn't. Um, Tracy Trumbull has also been on our session and uh, Patrick Beeson is part of the planning committee for this. So, every, so anyway, we had a pretty good group. Uh, Knight Stavender from the Tennessee and also helped us out, so that's pretty good. Today we have, uh, for our last session, we have uh, Pat Stigman, who is Vice President and Executive Editor slash Producer of ESPN.com. Uh, he's also a longtime internet guy, one of the sort of the pioneer innovators that's been around for a long time. Uh, he oversees ESPN.com's day-to-day -day operations, content planning and management, that of uh, an award-winning team of more than 200 editors, writers, and producers. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to read all that. Okay. <coughs> they don't have time. <laughs> back, back in the old days, before he went to uh, ESPN in 2004, he spent nine years as vice president and director of internet operations for the uh, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. And so he was a, he's an old newspaper guy, too. So I'll let him take it from there. Thank you. Happy to be with you this afternoon. How's, how's everybody doing? If, uh, I promise if you stick with me um, at the end, you can all come and play with my iPad if you want to, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. Would check it out for the weekend? No, <laughs> I just got it yesterday. Um, thanks for the time today. I, I'm going to be a little free-flowing, um, and based on some of the previous sessions, probably going to be a little bit more macro level, um, talking a little bit, hopefully, about some things that you'll find provocative or interesting. Uh, some of it will be completely uh, translatable and, t and tangible for your use every day in your newsrooms. Some may not. Um, some may be things that you can go back to your folks on the business side and talk about um, and, and tell them why this is a good investment and why we should continue to work in this space. Some may not. But I just want to kind of give you a little picture of uh, kind of what we're doing in the mobile space at ESPN and ESPN Digital Media. It is a critical space for us. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. I, as a longtime newspaper guy, I spent 10 years sort of wearing the evangelist collar in the newsroom at the Journal Sentinel in Milwaukee, trying to tell everybody why we weren't scooping ourselves if we put the story on the website before it was in the paper the next day. Um, and I don't know that we ever quite got there. I thought we made some pretty good progress. I have to say, when I got to ESPN five years ago, I took the collar off. Um, this is a company that absolutely gets cross-platform initiatives. There is no sort of faking effort of lip service to, yeah, that internet thing's kind of important, but we're a TV company. We are a TV company, but we're really a multimedia company. And as much as any place I've ever seen or been, um, it's truly platform agnostic. We aren't concerned whether you watch SportsCenter or you read it on ESPN.com or you read ESPN the magazine or you watch it on ESPN2 or ESPN Classic or ESPNU or get it on ESPN Mobile or get it on the iPad or get it on the iPhone, just get it from ESPN. And you know we have a, we have a, a mission statement of the company that when I first got there I thought was a little thin. It didn't seem like it, you know, I've been with these huge mission statements I'd already been part of. And the mission statement of ESPN is serve sports fans. That's it. It's not make a lot of money, it's not, you know, we have to have this tremendous, um, you know, commitment to journalism. The, the theory is if you serve sports fans, all of that will take care of itself. If you have great journalism, if you have great storytelling, if you have great services, if you have great content, if you're engaging the audience, uh, the revenue side will come with it and it's, you know, everybody's happy at the end of the day. So far, so good on that front. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things we're doing in this space. Um, sorry, I got to make sure I'm working here. So why is why is mobile so important to us? I'm going to be moving around here, so if I block anybody's view, just yell at me. And by the way, raise your hand at any point. Um, this is a transcendent space. It's transcendent in the business model. It's transcendent in how people access and can acquire information. It's transcendent in how we deliver and generate information. And at the end of the day, I think it's transcendent for storytelling. I think it's an opportunity to reach an audience in a way that we haven't ever been able to do using multimedia opp opportunities to get there. For us, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about the metrics, but you know, it's crazy to not be in this space. There's 150 million new mobile phones sold each year. 80% of the population carries a mobile device with them. 
Um, and, and again, it's not just a cell phone. It could be your iPhone, it could be an ebook, it could be the iPad, it could be portable game players. My daughter can access the internet on her DSi, my eight-year-old daughter. It's crazy. Um, and, and sports, frankly, is a very mobile-friendly environment. The opportunity to connect to your teams, to the players that you care about, to scores, to results. Uh, if you happen to play fantasy sports, it's you know a lifeblood of being a carrying this around with you. And it's a passionate following. Sports is very tribal. Uh, it's very much about my team versus your team, my community versus your community. And the ability to engage, debate, discussion in that space is, is self-evident. And you know, one of the things we are trying to do is make better fans. Um, smarter fans, better fans come to us more often. They're, they're more satisfied, they feel like they've got a, uh, a, a uh, their time with us has been well spent. Um, and it makes them smarter and better and they can brag to their friends. We've got a big audience. Um, we serve about 11 million monthly unique visits um, in our mobile platform alone. Um, it's male, heavily male, heavily diver uh, 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 diverse in terms of, uh, you know, not in terms of gender, but in, ter in terms of age. Um, it's really the connective tissue between what we're doing in the print space with the SBN Magazine, our television properties, our digital web properties, um, our radio properties. And we're really trying to be innovative. We've spent a lot of time and money in this space. We actually had a, a product a few years back that some of you may have heard of uh, called ESPN The Phone. And it's one of the few times we may have overreached a little bit in terms of a business. Um, but I'll tell you what, it was the absolute smartest investment we ever made. Essentially, we created a phone. And we sold it out there just like you would go get your Verizon phone or your Sprint phone. It was the ESPN, the phone. It was, it was powered um, by Verizon, but at the end of the day, it, was, it looked like ESPN. It had ESPN logos. It had ESPN content on it. There was an issue in terms of the business model because I think there was an underestimation of how difficult it was to get people to change their plans, their cell plans. Um, even when they love the phone, they're like, yeah, but I got a $200, you know, I got to pay $200 to get out of this plan. I, I can't really switch right now. Um, but what happened with that space is we ended up creating really powerful uh, uh, UIs and applications that we felt could be translatable into the other space. And I think we particularly have, have been able to take advantage of that um, with the iPhone, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Again, just underscoring the point, look at the penetration. It's, it's almost caught up to television in terms of the, pe the penetration of mobile. If you're not there, you have to be there because that's where your audience is going to be. There's no, no question about that. And if you look at our growth right now, there's about 25% um, uh, mobile web penetration. Not, not mobile devices overall, but access of the mobile web. And we've got about 11 million uniques. Rough projection going out to 2013 based on Nielsen data, 65% mobile web um, penetration. We're up to 30 million uniques, and the opportunity is still significantly higher above that. So what do we do in this space? We do a lot of different things. Uh, we send a ton of mobile alerts, which we're going to talk about. Um, we have a great, I think, a great mobile website. It's actually still the most dominant element of our mobile uh, portfolio. Obviously, the iPhone is gaining quickly. Um, we'll talk some numbers here. It's about 20% of our total usage now in the mobile spaces on the iPhone. We have video on demand available on all of our mobile platforms. We have a streaming mobile uh, television product that's 24 hours of uh, streaming video available on the mobile space. And obviously last weekend with the launch of the iPad, we were there front and center uh, with uh, our, our debut of, of